Good day guys, Austin here, and in this one today, we're going to be doing a little, little bit of Sega Saturn then. Does that even make sense? Sega Saturn? Sega Saturn. That's what we're going to be setting up. The actual console, Sega Saturn, we're going to be getting the games working on this computer. How many times can I say Sega Saturn? Anyway, what we're going to be doing to be more specific is getting the Mednafen emulator set up. Now this is hot off the press, this is brand new. This has only come to fruition in the last month or two and it's been developed like no one's business. Even to the stage now, well, this is the go-to emulator for everything Sega Saturn. For me, anyway. So without further ado, and enough waffles, let's get stuck in. Right, so to get the Sega Saturn set up on our system using the Mednafen emulator, we're going to need a couple of things. First off, you're going to need the file that I have given you. Now, within the description down below, there's going to be a link, more than likely to a mega site. What I need you to do is download the files from there, and you'll end up with this, which is a compressed 7-zip file. What I need you to then do is uncompress, extract, whatever it's called, decompress this file so you get the folders and files from within so in my case scroll down to 7-zip extract here and by the gods of uncompression tools we should end up with this folder here called the Sega Saturn fix files now within there is some files that will aid us getting the emulator to work properly on my and your systems okay once you've done that then we need the emulator itself so again description down below will lead you to this website which is the official Mednafen website now Mednafen first off is an awesome emulator as you can see in the list down the left hand side here it covers lots of systems and in many cases it's the first choice of many people for many of the systems that it does emulate now for me Sega Saturn was always covered for the majority of my games by the SSF emulator However, even in this short period of time, just a month or two, that this emulator has been running, it surpassed that. It's absolutely unbelievable, and it's now become my go-to choice for everything Sega Saturn-y in the world. You are going to run probably 98% of all the games quite smoothly across the board, but you're still going to need other emulators to get those problematic games to work. Luckily, none of those problematic games I want to play. <laughs> <laughs> but that's me. Anyway, to get this working then, as you can see, this is the official website. You're going to need to go to the releases tab here. This will lead you to the download section. Now, within here, you've got various different builds. What you want to be looking at is the top one. Now, this may be a different number. Obviously, this is updating very quickly. And well, there's lots of builds in between. So what we're going to need is the latest one that is well suits your system so you got 32-bit windows or 64 i'm running a 64 so common sense would dictate i use this one all you need to do is click on it and it should download as you can see here now while that's happening i'm going to need a folder to put all this setup within so right clicking on my desktop you can do it whatever you want to set this emulator up so for me i'm going to call it mednafen demo but i encourage you guys to name it something that is well, relevant to whatever this emulator is, so we either use Menafin and that code that it is, or the date, something that you know which build of Menafin you're using, because trust me, you're going to get hooked and you're going to be updating this as often as possible, but you're going to end up with loads of different folders named Menafin and something random. Put it something current so you know what build this is. It makes sense in the long run. Okay, now you've got that then. Hopefully your file, or file should have downloaded. Can't even talk today. So what I'm going to do is copy this into the new folder that I've just created. Okay, we no longer need the website for the time being. So what we're going to need is the files from within here. So all you need to do is, again, right click on it and extract it. Now I believe this is a raw file, so I'm going to put extract here. And hopefully, there we go. As you can see, they've all now gone into that folder ready for us to use a Mednafen and is in its full glory. However, it's only its infancy. <laughs> we need to configure and get this set up. So these are the skeleton files, everything that is needed for a, well, a Mednafen setup. But you will see, once we run this for the first time, it will start making more files and folders as it embeds itself on our system. So first off, I want to give this fully permissions, fully permissions, full permissions on our computer to, to do what it does. I can't even speak to do what it does. Jesus. So right click on there, click properties. 
and you should have a compatibility tab or something similar depending on what version of Windows you're running. Go to run this ad program as administrator, click the box, click apply and click OK. That now has sufficient permission to do what it needs to do on our computer to run smoothly. Next thing we need to do is actually run Mednafin. Now nothing will happen but you will notice lots of files and folders get created within this folder itself. So let's run it. And there you go. There's all the files and folders which it needs to work correctly. Yes, this program worked correctly. Thank you, Windows, for asking though. <laughs> okay then. Now what we need to do is use our files that we downloaded a second ago to fix Midnathan. So open the files that I provided for you. I'm a good guy like that. Drag it over and just simply put them into the root of that folder. So now you've got the Midnathan program itself or application you've got the fixed files that I've given you and more importantly we'll be looking at in a second the Mednafin configuration file now at this point you're gonna need a program to be able to well modify Mednafin itself for those of you who never experienced Mednafin before it's got no GUI it's got no front end it's got no boxes with nice little drop down options and things that you can tick so what I'm gonna do is give you the basics to know how to work Mednafin it's not that complicated it's not that daunting but it's a lot more manual than other emulators you can download GUIs and all kinds of applications that aid you but trust me guys it's alright in the short term but those break really quickly and often do more harm than good but for now let's just get this working on our system so first off we're gonna use this emulator as yeah, so we know that it works at the very least launching a game so while we're talking about games let's talk about the kind of games that it can run first off Sega Saturn games that's quite obvious however the kinds of formats that they run off is usually bin and Q format or CCD format they're the most obvious ones out there if you've got mp3 files in there they can be kind of problematic and you may have issues launching those games but you can find them from elsewhere, you can dump them into a different format. I'm just telling you what this emulator can do. Okay, other issues that we do have is it cannot at this moment in time run in PAL games. If you do have a PAL game and you can only find it in a PAL format, in other words a European format, you can use a Sega Saturn region patcher and that will change the actual region of the games into whatever region you want to place them in. But that is far more advanced and I don't really want to go into that in this tutorial today. I just want to get a goddamn game working. So without further ado, let's get the game working. Right, first off, let's throw Burning Rangers at it. All you need to do is drag the actual Q file over to the Bednafin application file. So now, hopefully, it will launch. Yes, we got past that. Now what I've done is I've muted this emulator because, well, Sega will start kicking off on YouTube saying that I'm stealing their property and blah de blah because I'm playing their music in the background. But as you can see, it should. There we go, launch into the game itself and it is now fully playable. However, nothing is configured to our system. So the bare basics that we need to configure is the controls itself. So let's exit out of here. Now what we want to do is configure the Manafin configuration files. So in the description down below, you will see a link to a program. If you've not already got it installed, you need Notepad++. You can of course use just Notepad itself, however as you will probably see if you open it with Notepad, it's a big jumbled mess. Notepad++ is far more advanced, get it installed on your computer and make sure you open this kind of file format, in other words .cfg, a configuration file, with this. All you need to do if it doesn't do that automatically is find the file itself, in our case this one, right click it, uh, go to open with and if it's not in the options there do choose another app, choose a default file or choose a default program, locate it, launch it with it and from that moment on and that day forth it will always open that kind of file format with Notepad++. Trust me guys it is not just for this emulator it will aid you for years to come. So open it up and as you can see this is the the information that the emulator uses in order for it to run whatever settings we're doing. 
Right, first thing that we need to do is only a few settings in here. It looks quite daunting, there is thousands of actual settings to play around with. We only need to change a few to get us to run it into a state where we're happy and we can do everything from within the emulator itself. So the first thing that we need to do is one of the settings at the very top is called cache entry CD image in memory. So what that's going to do is it's going to store everything from within the CD, all the information that the game needs to run, within your memory. So it means it's a little smoother when you're actually playing the games. If your games are stuttering or something like that, this will aid it no end. What you need to do then is to enable this is get to the zero bit, delete it and just put a one in there. That's now saying that I want to use that feature. It will not work for everybody, but for 99% of the people watching this, it will work. If you're still stuttering or if you have any problems, change that back to zero. Okay, the next thing that we need to do to get this to work is set up our controls. Now, controls are pretty bog standard and uh, for 99% of the games, you won't need to mess around much, but there is certain games that require a certain kind of, I don't know, control mechanism, and that's a 3D joystick. In other words, more advanced than the actual standard pad that came with it. So we're gonna enable that option to come as standard on our emulator. So what we need to do here is go into the search tab at the top, go into find, and what we need to search for is 3D pad. Now hopefully, when I click find text, it will take us to the configuration line that involves all them words. So as you can see, we've got 3D pad all the way down, but what we need to do is enable it. Now, just above there, we've got input device for virtual port one. What it's used at this moment in time is just a normal standard gamepad. So when we configure the keys, it will only be configuring them for a standard gamepad. We want it to use a 3D pad so we can use the problematic games on there also. So what we want to rename this to is 3D pad. Simple. And that is it. That is everything that we need to do to get this up and running properly on our system. So click on file, click on save. Now what we've done is we've given it the right control mechanism and we've enabled it to probably run a bit more smoother upon our system also. So exit out of here. Now what I want to do is throw a game at it again. So this time it's done a USA game. I'm going to show you that it also plays Japanese games. So we're going to launch up uh, Dead or Alive. And as you can see, this is a CCD format. So it also shows you that it does play different formats other than bin and queue. So I'm going to drag this over, I'm going to put it on top of the mid nothing file and hopefully again, yes, it launches. So now we can see USA files and now we can see uh, Japanese files are both launching and it's using the right BIOSes for each one. Amazing. Now what we need to do then is set up our controls so we can actually play our games within here. All you need to do for that is press Alt Shift 1 and that will give us the option to start configuring our 3D control pad for player 1. If once you're doing player 2 you press Alt Shift 2 and that will allow you to do player 2. Press the buttons twice to, for each one of those directions or commands. So up, up, down, down, left, left, right, right, start button, start button. Right, now it's up to you how you configure the actual layout of your control pad. But for me, I'm going to use X as A, A as B, how confusing is this? <laughs> B as C. Uh, X is going to be my L1 button, in other words, my left shoulder button. Y is going to be my Y button on the control pad itself. Z is going to be my right shoulder button. Now it's asking me for the analog actual shoulder buttons, which is going to be for me, left trigger, right trigger. And now it's asking for the analog stick. So I want to use up, up down down left left right right and mode select is going to be me changing between a normal pad and a 3d control pad again 
Certain games require certain types of pads. If we didn't enable this as standard, then what would happen is we wouldn't be able to play certain games. So if we was to put this as select, whenever we press select and controls aren't working, just press select again and hopefully the controls should work in every game, depending on what kind of pad you've set it to. So I'm going to put select as that. So now I can oh, control the actual game. There we go. Let's launch it up, show you in actually in action. Hopefully I'm pressing the right buttons here. Come on! <laughs> okay, so there you can see the emulator working. Now what I can do is show you the controls all working. Beautiful. Now if I was to press the mode button in other words my select button as i configured it as you can see i'm using it now is an analog stick so depending on whatever game i'm playing it will dictate on what control mechanism i want it to set up it will make more sense when you're playing a game that's more problematic but select button will always switch between the two types of control interfaces so that's mission complete to be honest guys you've now got the emulator up and running we can configure the controls you know about which file formats work and you know which regions work of course you can get around that using the techniques that i've told you the only thing left to do is to tell you how to get it full screen that's pretty damn simple all you need to do is press alt and enter and that will put the emulator itself into full screen now of course like i said this isn't very good with its gui there's no drop down boxes it's not exactly very user friendly but in terms of power and how this emulator works emulating the systems that it's compatible with absolutely unbelievable but nothing know what they're doing with emulating their systems so now you've got the basics done you can put it in your front end you can put it in your arcade cabinet you can put it whatever you want but now you've got the basics to get the systems to work some things that you can do to aid you with all that is in the description down below there's a link and it will guide you to here which is basically all the documentation that is involved with it to be honest it's pretty damn boring pretty damn in depth and very complicated however if you was to scroll all the way down it will give you some short cuts as to various key presses and what they do so I would urge you to take a look at this as it may do something which well you want the emulator to do another good one is to add extra effects to the setup you can do that with scan lines you can do that with filters all kinds of stuff that you got going on there so if you scroll down a bit further where we was editing earlier on with the actual notepad plus plus these are various settings which you can change and a very in-depth description as to how that will change and what they will do once changed <laughs> jesus this is hard to say but yeah there's loads to get into here and a lot more configuration than what you can do especially than one of these little GUIs that you can download trust me guys get into it this way and you will well, be emulating this system and lots more that this can play to the extreme so that is it now guys that is it complete we've now got the Benafin system up and running especially with the Sega Saturn Look forward into the future, guys, because within there, we will be taking a close look at RetroArch. We're going to be configuring this to also play the Sega Saturn and other systems alongside that because it's an absolutely awesome emulator. And yes, I call it an emulator. However, that's a bit off topic. So, it has been an absolute pleasure, as always, bringing this to you guys. So please like, please subscribe, please do the things that people normally do in this grand old world we call YouTube but most of all guys most of all you have a good day laters <laughs> <laughs>